Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle LA by Night. Tonight, we bring you season two, episode four, Teardrop. Let's meet the vampires. My name is Alexander Ward, and I play Jasper. I'm Erica Ishii, and I play Annabelle. B. Dave Walters, Victor Temple, and a very important 72-hour deadline is approaching. Cynthia Marie and Nellie G. And special guests, Vince Casso, Whitney Moore, and Mark Meir will all join us at dramatically appropriate moments. Let's thank Dogmite, the master craftspeople who have given us these beautiful clan dice boxes and our fantastic storyteller screen. Thank you, Dogmite. Before we begin tonight's story, let's recap with a rat's eye view from Ramona's sketchbook. I said that they should be ready for anything, right? Yes, I did. And I guess anything means an evening with a lot of visitors while the gang is laying low after their uh, shenanigans. First to come calling was Eva, our favorite blood witch. She brought flowers for the gang, gave Jasper a single red rose. Now what could that mean, huh? Mwah! Biggest dude I've ever seen was next. He gave Undad a letter from Miranda. Snake Lady wants his help to rebuild her club that burned down, accidentally. Then it was Kyoko's turn. Another blood witch. So many witches. We really should color code them or something. Remember her? She almost fried Jasper's face off. Also, accidentally. Turns out she knows our sweet rookie Annabelle's sire, Carver. Hey, baby, Surprise! That can't be good. And finally, oh boy, Hollywood Abrams. You could say he was just a little upset with Victor. Seems our pals may have started a war. You know what that means, Dom, right? Yes, time to shake the dust off our paws and claws and get ready to rumble. The ride gets bumpy from here. Bumpy indeed. What could possibly go wrong? Let's find out when we tell a vampire story. We return to our story the very next night. Most of the people of Los Angeles can move about freely during the day and the evening. They can go out and walk. They can drive, jog, run, even skateboard if they want to. But you can't. Not right now. The scrutiny that you've been under is easing. You feel that tonight may be the first night you'll be able to leave Club Maharaja without having to use a secret tunnel exit. But it's still a risk keeping out of sight of the press and the public. Club Maharaja is very comfortable, but it's beginning to feel like a very 
comfortable prison. Nellie has been absent since the Grove incident, which is very inconvenient because you have some pressing business. Yeah, Miranda, Glendale, the Chat Noir. Yeah, just make sure the permits go through. Thank you. It's it's important. I need this quickly. And again, tell give Fiorenza my best. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah. <sighs> yeah. So uh got that going. Trying to help out Miranda. You mm-hmm. know, bear any business. Right. Or you two. Day five. Tensions <laughs> continue. As our isolation marches on. Who knows when one of us may just snap. I, I was, oh! <laughs> <laughs> We've got Wi-Fi, come on, it's not that bad. We could have been stuck, you know, in his place. My place is perfectly fine. His place is nice. As a point of order, I'm gonna try and heal myself another point tonight. You are still suffering from two points of aggravated damage. It's, a, it's another night, so three rouse checks. One success. Mm-hmm. Two successes. And? Success. So, one aggravated wound to go. You look markedly improved. Your skin has ceased, well, ceased some flaking, uh, and the burns have begun to fade, and the edges have begun to heal. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't go so far as to say your face looks normal, but we're getting there. All right. But you do look better. Thanks. Thank hey, this look works, by the way. It does. I would also like to try and heal superficial oh, yeah. damage. Mm-hmm. Okay, so one rouse check. Good. Okay, your hunger does not increase. Mark one wound clear. How many do you have left to go? Two more. Two more. Do you wish to try to heal all of it? I'll, I'll try for more, yeah. Okay. Another rouse check. Okay. And Good. starting off the night with some very lucky roll. <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah. So the undead flesh and bone and tendon all knit together. By your estimates, when do you think we get to stop having to hide here? I mean, more accurately, when do you have to stop hiding here? Uh, I, I think we're, we're probably good to, to get out in the streets tonight. I mean, if it's something important. Um, right. You know, the sent out the press releases. Again, the reporters kind of not outside. There's some super fans, but they're probably going to be here anyway. So we're mm-hmm. you know, probably doing all right. Um, uh, I told you guys, Nelly said 72 hours. That's right. tonight. So, actually, by my clock, that's 90 minutes from now to the minute because she's precise. We haven't heard from her. We need to do something, but she didn't say where she was going. So, I'm not too sure about that. Right. Well, do you have like a tracker on her phone or blood magic or. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait. If she said she was going to be back and she hasn't been and all the craziness has been happening, something's wrong. That's all well and good, Annabelle, but how are you not going to wait? How are you going to find her? Uh, has anybody checked her Twitter? I kind of do most of the tweeting of her. Our power duo. Would we look? We could. We could talk to the weird sisters. I don't want to call Eva because I'm kind of saving that ringer. But okay. right. Maybe they could do something. I don't really know about Tremere things. Is that a thing? Can they find? I don't want to insult them. Make them feel like they're like bloodhounds or something. I'm sure they can do a lot of things. We could ask. What, Victor? Your cell phone buzzes. It is Campbell, your head of security, calling you. Yeah, Campbell. Sir, uh, there's a there's a guy here who wants to see you. Uh, he just came in off the street. 
Says his name is uh, Gregory Dimitrios. Wants to see you right away. Excuse me? Yeah, says his name is uh, Gregory Dimitrios. Lock this place down now. Yes, sir. Put four men on him and bring him in here. Right away, sir. And I hang up. The hunter, Gregory Dimitrios, the one Nelly said she killed. So you're just gonna let him walk in here? Well, I mean, I think we can handle him when he gets here, but what am I supposed is to do, he, just turn him is, away? Is he dead? Like, I, she killed appara- him. Apparently not, apparently someone's telling fibs. Well, either this guy's well, lying or she is, is. dead, what if she killed him and she, she like- Sired him? Oh, she wouldn't. No, she wouldn't. Sir, ready? I actually, I, I do draw my gun, and I just kind of have it on the desk in front of me. I stay still, but I invisible. You're going to vanish. Vanish. So you will not be seen by the normal eye. Sir, can we come in? Are you ready? Yeah, bring him in. Campbell opens the door. Gregory Dimitrios looks a little the worse for wear. Now, Victor... You have seen a photograph, so you know what to expect. You can verify that this is indeed the man in the photo. Holy shit. Hey, everybody. And yeah, not dead. Now, before you all vamp the fuck out and kill me, I'm here for Nelly. Okay? I'm sure you've all been wondering where she's been the last few days. I become visible again. (sighs) You know where she is? Yeah, I know where she is. I point my gun right at him, and I'm like, if you people have her, I will splatter the walls of this room with your brains. Victor, which gun is it? The gun. It is the Hunter's Ralphus pistol. Yes, the Hunter's Ralphus pistol. Yes. Where is she? How do you know where she is? I'm not. I'm not. You people anymore. Stop okay. saying that. Why are oh, you not he... dead? Okay. Hate to break this to you. Sorry, Nels, but she has been lying to you on my behalf. <laughs> I've been cooperating with Nellie for about six weeks now. I came to her because I needed help. She covered for me, and I've been doing her favors. I don't work for the FBI anymore. I don't have a team, it's just been me and her. However, shit got real a few days ago and I'm at a point now, I, I, trust me, I don't wanna be here any more than you guys want me here and I sure as hell would like to not be known to you, but I have no choice now. I take the gun away from his head, but I do still have it like in front of me, like basically in- On the table? On the table with my hand on it. Very well. Like talk. Okay, look, you guys all know what went down at the Grove. After everything happened, she texted me, wanted to meet. By the time I got to her, she was freaking out about something. I don't know what, but she wanted me to drive her to this place in Los Feliz. We get there, she goes inside. I wait outside, 15 minutes, uh, maybe less, and I hear just pandemonium in there. I go in, and I, I can't even begin to describe what I saw in there. Shit just flying across the room. There's this, this chick with, with dark blonde hair, looked a little bit like Nellie, honestly. And Nellie on one side of the room, and this, what I can only describe as a fucking ghost. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just mm-hmm. throwing just shit, furniture, bits of masonry and wood at her. And I tried to get in there. I, I, I took a piece of fucking brick to the face. Yeah, I can see. Nothing could touch this guy. Nothing could hurt him. And, and in moments, the ground gives way. Nellie goes down. She lands on a, on a beam or something, stakes her right through. And this guy, this uh, yeah. Spanish fucker, just collapses the roof on her. And she's buried under at least a few feet of, of masonry and, and timber. And I have spent the last three fucking days trying to dig her out of there. I haven't slept, I haven't eaten, but I can't get her out. There's a few big pieces left, I can't move them. 
I've been working all night trying to, to, to cover her during the day so the sun can't hit her. But I'm at a point now where I need help. And as much as I think this is a stupid idea, Nelly told me that I could trust you guys if I needed to, and that I could find you at the Maharaja. So, here I am. How do we know that we can trust you and that this isn't a trap? What the fuck am I gonna do? Come on. Look at me. What could I do? You guys had four fuckers on me when I walked in here. Even- You've killed my other two agents. What else do I have? You trust me? And Nelly lives, you don't, and she probably dies. She's been staked down there for three days. I got tarps set up so the sun doesn't reach her, but what if someone else finds her? Campbell. <clears throat> Sir. <sighs> Get some guys together. Sir. Meet me down in the garage. Right away. <sighs> I activate Daunt. <laughs> so. Victor's entire demeanor shifts suddenly, no longer the stern but affable businessman. Something about his face changes, the, the eyes harden, the, the smile becomes unfriendly. He radiates fear. He is clearly not a person that you want to be next to. And I do come towards him to make him like maximally uncomfortable. I don't know what sort of arrangement you reach with Nelly. And she and I are going to have a very intense discussion about that. Oh, you oh, I bet believe it. we are. Look, this is the last position I want to be in. I thought this was stupid. I've spent three days trying to avoid this discussion right now. But if I don't do this, if I don't get your help, Nelly's as good as dead. And I'm pretty sure nobody here wants that. Wow. Unless there's something that I don't know that Nelly should know about. When he looks at me, uh, mesmerism, submerged directive. Okay. He is not an unwilling subject, even though he is immortal. So you will have to make a roll. Make sure oh, you geez. put in your hunger dice. I will roll for Vince. Uh, actually, I guess I need to make my morning rouse check. Mm -hmm. I, let me do that separately, because I don't know how many hunger dice I have. Go ahead and check. I'm good. All right. Just, just you look better with a tie on, by the way. In my own house. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, my directive is, if this is a trap, defend me with your life. Four successes. Okay. You have no way of knowing whether or not the directive takes effect. So, if your life is threatened, that's when you'll know. We have to go. I, I don't know if we can believe him. This is insane, but if he's right, if there's a chance he's right, we have to go. Yeah. We're done fucking chattering. That would be a good idea. So let me uh, understand here. We have to go to a place that he's said to find a member of our team that's been lying and killing and doing a lot of things that are unpleasant for all of us on his word and believe it's not a trap. Hey, medium rare, are you fucking perfect? I'm gonna really? tear your head off if you don't shut the fuck up. It really, you shouldn't say things about that. You're not looking so high yourself, man. Especially because there's no guarantee that he has to let you live afterwards, even if you're telling the truth. So Wait. Sass might not be in your best interest. What's the location? Oh, no, 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 no. We're not playing that game. I will take you guys to where she is. Once we're all there, we can get her out. Look, you guys have every reason not to trust me. I get it. But I think I have just as many, if not more, reasons not to trust any of you blank fucks. Blank. We're working together right now like for Nelly's purpose. I don't like you, you don't like me. But if we don't do this, Nelly's gonna die. Look, when when um, Fiorenza first told me about them, I had some personal details about them, which I believe I've written down accurately, but it's my intent to lean against that. Say, um, 
You know the grandmother of yours in North Carolina? Greg? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Louisa Jankowski's sweet little baby. Tim Wilson's dad. All those people. What do you want? If this is anything other than what you say, if this is anything other than exactly what you say, you will live long enough to see terrible things happen to all of them, and then I will let him have you. Victor, your phone again. It is X's number. It's not a good time, X. I don't. Hey, put it, hey, I don't no, put it on no, speaker. don't hang up. Don't no. You, no, I do not hang up. I'm just saying I don't put it on speakerphone. Okay. Hey. Hey. What? Your barony ship. <laughs> How are you, Victor? Oh, Jesus. Now, X, you have seven seconds before I hang up this phone. Baron Therese would like to meet with you. Well, what? with you, Nellie, Jasper, and Annabelle. T Tonight. Set it up. Just tell me, tell me when. I'm, I'm really in the middle of something important right now. Oh, I understand. Tonight, 2 a.m., your place. Wait, to, she wants to meet tonight, what? here. No, we can't. She was very, very specific. <laughs> she would like to speak to you before your big meeting. So she will be there. She <clears throat> would like very much for you to be there and yeah, your, uh, your coterie. Yes, uh, fine. I'll yes. tell her yes. that you'll be there. 2 a.m. Fine. Fine. And I just hang up. It's, we have to be back here by 2 a.m. Oh, great. Just, what? I'm sorry. I'll try to have you back before curfew. Also, I need you to forget that you heard those names. And I do for, make him forget. You want to use? Uh, um, forgetful mind. Forgetful mind. What is the specific thing that you are... Willing him to forget. So Actually, let's give us a, a. I'm sorry, I won't, because that'll take too much time, and I don't uh, want him to forget our entire exchange. So mm -hmm. I apologize. I won't. Very well. So you changed your mind. Don't agree with threatening your loved ones who are completely innocent and on the East Coast anyway. Um, That's but nice of you. You will have to answer for your actions if anything goes awry, because we don't have any other choice than to trust him. We don't. When we thought that something might be happening with you, Nellie was the one who took dumb risks, walked through the mirror, because she said you'd do the same for everybody else. And I know she's lied to us, but we gotta, we gotta go after her. I know. I promise you, at the very least, this is no chat noir. So that was you guys. Yeah, you fucking killed two of us. We didn't. The firebomb that you dropped on the place killed your people. You know what? Let's yeah. talk on the way, Chatty Cathy. Okay. Um, and we do head towards a garage. Very well. Any special preparations before you leave the club? I no. do want Campbell to bring another Suburbans loaded with guys. Yes, you've instructed him to put a team together, and he has done so. When you reach the underground parking garage, your vehicle is um, ready to go. Um, with a driver that you haven't met before. Uh, you've seen him on the team, but you don't think he's driven for you before. He introduces himself as Baker. Sir, I, it'll be my privilege to drive you tonight. I get in the car and I just say, um, you're not going to hear anything tonight and don't speak to me unless it's important. We have to be back at this club by 2 a.m. Do you understand? Where? You'll hot shut over here. Start by heading to Los Feliz. I'll direct you from there. I uh, text Ava and ask if there's any, any ghost busting tips. Any ghost busting tips? I find it rather curious. That Hold that thought, Annabelle. You could see these people. Yeah. Something that Nellie told me I could do. I find it interesting how incredibly dedicated you are to her. This is way beyond just a mere arrangement. Mm, yeah. I'm not clever. dedicated to Nellie, okay? She helped me out. I help her out. I, unlike a lot of you, 
take my commitments, my loyalty seriously. I back the people who back me. She did me a favor when she didn't have to. And I take that very, very seriously. You're counting on us backing her now. We're rushing off into what is almost certainly a trap now because we cover each other. Yeah, you are. Would I have any possible inkling as to what might be going on with him? Hmm. Let's make um, a cult. And thinking about Jasper's proclivities, Let's make it intelligence. All right. Can I try as well? I do have a little. One of you can make the roll, but if you have an occult, you can assist him by recalling information, and he can add an extra die to his pool. Perfect. It's a lot of fucking dice. Three, four, five successes. He's very good at that. Five successes. Now bear in mind that this is keep taking place in the vehicle as you drive yep. towards Los Feliz. <clears throat> You think it is very, very likely that um, he is experiencing enhanced loyalty, mm. uh, possibly from ingestion of Vitae. Right. Or it is very possible that he's acting of his own free will. <sighs> it's not certain. Interesting. You're looking me up and down real fucking hard there, Jazz. It's, yeah, I am. It's the same way, I believe. Um, <sighs> You people look at uh, a steak. <laughs> it's nice. Okay. Annabelle, you do receive a text back from Eva. It simply says, may I call? Uh, yeah. yeah. A few moments later, your phone rings. Hello? Annabelle, how are you? Good. Uh, Are you having ghost problems again? Yeah, yes, it, it would seem that way. What do you know? Um, seems like poltergeisty, uh, angry ghost, uh, most likely Don Antonio, uh, Petronella, Petronella possession. Annabelle, are you here in the park? Uh, it mm. looks that way. Yeah. Hmm. Let's you see. Around? <laughs> there is no sure protection. The restless dead are very difficult to combat. There are certain blood sorceries that can be prepared that will assist you, but they take considerable time uh, I if mean, you we're, are. We're on the move, so. I yeah. doubt you have time for it. No, we don't. Some of the ancient folk remedies can sometimes be effective, but I'm afraid that um, it's a bit of trial and error. I'm not an expert in this field, unfortunately. So do let me know how you get on. Okay. So is Jasper with you? Uh, he is, you wanna talk to him? N no. Are you sure? N no, He's no. He's free. That's that's all right. You have ghost business to take care of. And yeah, you are but I mean, we are, we're in the car. We have we have plenty I'm, of time to chat. I'm or certain you have a I've number got, though, right? Uh, yeah, I can talk all you want. I'm in, here. In the background, Shh. I yell, "We are not free." It sounds like you're very busy, and I've um, I've left uh, I left my cauldron on the boil. Oh. I'll talk to you later. Oh yeah. Okay, but. You Good night. Remember. Oh, bye, bye, bye. She hangs up. What is going on? Ava said to say hello. <laughs> oh. Uh, I need to know something. Yeah. How did you find out who we are? How did you know our names? Jankowski, you, Wilson. How did you get on our trail in the first place? <laughs> yeah, we've been tracking you guys for a while. <clears throat> My uh, former division in the FBI, uh, although not very well looked upon and, in my opinion, underfunded, has been on to you folks for quite some time. We've been in LA for a while, gathering intel. 
on what's been going on around here. By folks, do you mean us specifically or all of us? All of the us blanks, as you said. Really the greater LA supernatural community. <laughs> so polite. Yeah, uh, the Chat Noir was meant to be a very early step in a much larger operation. Our superiors were not very convinced that we were onto something. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to uh, prove them wrong. <sighs> Didn't quite go that way. All right. So now here we are. You're, since your whole team has been wiped out and your superiors don't really believe it, is that kind of the end of the trail? I haven't heard anything from the Bureau, from headquarters, in over six months. I found Nelly of my own volition because I knew that without her, I'd go from living on the street, which I was, to dead by one of you. And I know I'm not talking shit when I say that if I came to any one of you, that would have been the end result. Nellie stood up for me and she had my back. And that's why I'm here right now. And that's why I have hers. No, no, you're alive because off. Nellie is prone to making serious mistakes. That's why you're alive. She's the only half rational one of you. And I've been watching you guys for a while. She's not bad for a blank. <laughs> Greg. Yeah. You are guiding them to the correct location, I assume? I am, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the route takes you from East Hollywood, north, up into the uh, trendy neighborhood of Los Files. You direct them away from the major streets, and eventually, you pull into the gravel parking lot of a very small neighborhood church. St. Helena's. It's a small community place of worship. Keep in mind that Los Files borders on Hollywood and Griffith Park. The neighborhood is named after a colonial Spanish-Mexican land grantee, Jose Files, along with present-day Griffith Park, makes up the original rancho. The church is old. It's built in Spanish colonial revival style. And right now, it looks deserted. The lights from your SUV show no signs of activity, but a lot of evidence of construction and renovation. This is a place where people are meant to come in the daylight. The spire and the false tower, those are meant to shine in the light of the sun to show mere mortals the reflected glory of heaven. But they're just above the level of the streetlights now, and they're angled wrong so that they look like black spikes jutting heavenward. Even the masonry angels and the cherubs don't really seem right. In the darkness, their eyes seem to stare at you. Their mouths twist in the shadows it's hard to say whether their expressions are of love or judgment. And it's all made stranger because of the high scaffolding obscuring a good portion of the church facade and the builder's materials, sawhorses, stacks of timber, bags of cement, wheelbarrows, various tools, all scattered around the grounds. Clearly there's construction going on in here during the day. But tonight, Nothing. It's dark and quiet. Is this the place? This is the place. She's inside, watch your step. Wait a second, don't move. I call Campbell. <clears throat> I'm like, take the guys in and look around. Make sure it's what he says it is. Yes, sir. The second SUV, which has trailed you here, cuts its motor, cuts its headlights. Doors open. Campbell and his team exit. They are using high-grade 
flashlights like um, a government agent might have. They pick their way carefully around the tools and the timber and the cement, and while you wait, they enter the front door of the church. And you can see the light from their flashlights through the windows playing around the inside. Sir? Yeah? It's a real mess in here. We are searching. I'll let you know if anyone is in here, but I doubt it. We're in the main hall, and it's a wreck. The pews are turned over. The A lot of the statues are broken. There's a lot of debris on the floor. There's an altar. It's messed up. You see any tarps over any piles of rubble? Hang on, sir. Checking the sacristy now. All the plaques on the wall have been ripped off. Paintings are torn from the walls. It's hard going. It's a lot of rubble here, sir. All right, we're in the rectory now. Man, they're in the church. So much for the whole, like, demon possession okay. exorcism thing. Mm -hmm. Parish office is clean. I don't think anybody's been here for a while. There are builder's tools. Looks like there's some sort of renovations going on in here. What part of the building is she in? Because they're not finding her. Okay, <laughs> sir. Her. Sir? All right. What we've got here, we're in the main hall again. Along one side, there's a large hole in the floor. One moment, sir. We've got her. We can see down into the hole. Uh, yeah, that's a real mess. She's she's trapped under some very heavy timber. It looked like support beams. It looks like something ripped away part of the floor and it fell on her. Sir, she's... There is a large piece of jagged wood protruding from her chest and she is not moving. Okay, that's yeah, it. We'll be right I, there. I tell you. I open the car door and I run out. Yep. You run into the church? Yes. It I is, as out. Campbell described, a lot of debris, a lot of fallen masonry and timber. It's hard to scramble over, but you can, of course, make your way. Yeah, the flashlights from the security team help quite a lot. And it is exactly as Campbell described. The hole in the floor is jagged around the edges. It's about um, four or five feet wide. And in their flashlights that they hold for you, you can, at the bottom of the hole, in some sort of basement area, see part of Nelly. You can see her face, you can see her arm stretched out under the timbers, and you can see the long, wicked piece of wood jutting upward from her chest. How far down is it? Maybe 15 feet. Okay. An easy leap. I'm following her in, but I did activate Unseen Passage when I left the car. Um, and I rolled my rouse check and I succeeded. You succeeded, so your hunger does not increase, but you are invisible to the naked eye as you move into the church. I follow her in and be like, Annabelle, wait. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we do. But, gently, we are going to have to live this together. Okay. Okay. When we get out of the car, I just say, lead on. All right. <clears throat> I go inside. Wait for the others. Mm -hmm. All right, you look. You enter the church. It is exactly Remember, as you left it, except, of course, for the security <laughs> team and the vampires. Now, look. The way he got her buried so far down there so deep is he brought down parts of the roof. We need to be real careful how we lift this shit or the place could come down. Some people may need to help support the structure while others get the material off of her. Now, I got everything off that I can. The rest is, I, I can't even budget, so that's up to you guys. Okay. I guess that's up to us. Yeah. Um, it's true, what he says. The view from where you are at the edge of the hole, it's not clear exactly what might happen if you try to lift those timbers without taking some precautions. All right. When I see her, um, down in the hole like is there room for me to jump down there yes i i do jump down and i just like put my hand on her head and i lean down and i kiss her on the head into the hole <sighs> she's not moving 
The stake is perhaps at least three feet long. It looks like a piece of uh, support timber that maybe broke away from the ceiling. She probably landed on it when she fell backwards through the hole. But beyond the fact that I am genuinely kissing her, I'm also going to check and make sure this is standard torpor. Like, it doesn't seem like she's under any sort of magic spell. Like, I've seen a staked vampire before. I'm just making sure that's what I'm looking at. Make an intelligence plus a cultural. I did study architecture when I was a human. You did indeed. May I roll to find the best possible way of uncovering her? Intelligence. Uh, I believe you have. Do you have specialty in that? I do. Add the die. How many successes? Length of culture. Two? Two successes. While Jasper is studying the sacristy, rectory, and all the other pieces and rooms of the church to see exactly how it's put together, you are examining Nelly. You don't think she is in Torpor. You think that she is merely staked and therefore paralyzed and immobile. As horrible as it seems, she can probably see and hear everything going on around her, but she cannot move or respond. And she's been like this for three nights. When I, when I realized that, I, I lean in and I just whisper in her ear, I said, I'm gonna get you out of here. Just hold on, we, we got people here, <clears throat> Jasper's gonna figure it out, Annabelle's here, we're gonna get you out of here. And I, I call up and I'm like, we need to move. I'm working on it. Activate four, prowess. Four successes. You increase your strength by supernatural means. Hmm? Make a rouse check. We're good. Four successes on studying the area. I also want to lower myself down to where she's at. You want to jump down again? Yeah. You certainly know the safest way to do it since you've been going down into the hole and coming up again for three days running. And I also activate prowess, and I succeeded on my routes check. A lot of uh, keeping the beast in check tonight. Still early. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jasper. Yeah. This is a very solidly built piece of construction. You don't think it's as old, though, as the style would suggest. It is revival style, mm. but it is definitely not from the colonial period. It's not like one of the mission churches, which were, of course, very distinctive right. in their architecture. This has a more modern design to it. Mm -hmm. So that means that whoever put this together understood the principles of load-bearing walls. Right. You think however, that if you don't shift that beam that's on her very carefully, a good chunk of this floor is gonna come down. Okay. There's probably a safe way to do it. You'll need to go down into the hole to figure it out. I'll drop into the hole. I also got drop down. That's cool. All of you are down in the hole now? Is there enough room for all of us down there before I jump in? There is, it's a little cramped. And what you can see, of course, uh, while you're here, is that um, a lot of the debris, brick, masonry, smaller pieces of timber and chunks of stone have all been cleared away and piled over to one side of the basement. Apparently, this is what Greg has been doing. Very I, devoted. From, from down in the hole. Um, now your security I, team is standing at the edge of the hole up top, shining their flashlights down and keeping an eye on the door to make sure that you're not disturbed. I call out to Campbell. Sir. Uh, Take everybody who's not solid and have them cover the perimeter. Yes, I don't sir. need the wrong person seeing this. Instructions if we uh, are disturbed, sir? <clears throat> Use the appropriate amount of force. Yes, sir. She's Fucking vampires. She's, uh, she's staked. She's not in Torbor, so she can hear us. She can't move. Oh my but... God. Yeah, that's... Is going to be okay? Yeah, we're going to get her out of here. Get you out of this? Just, what do I do? Jasper, tell, tell me what to Tell me what to lift. Yeah. I don't know if there's much you can do right now, Victor. It's gonna be on us to move these. These are rather large. We have to shift this beam here very carefully because if we don't, the rest of that floor is gonna come down on top. So let's be firm but gentle. Great plan. Jesus, fuck. 
What else? What, do you have one? No, please, go for it. Please, I'd love oh. to hear your plan in rescuing your heroine over here. Oh, fuck off. <sighs> now, what would you like us to roll to move this? Hmm. Annabelle and Jasper are trying to shift the beam together? Yeah. Superhuman strength. Wits and athletics. Athletics for the power. Wits for the navigation. And Who's got the larger pool of the two? I've got a five pool. Is that in, should we add dice including our prowess? Mm -hmm. So then I have a seven pool. Annabelle, what's your total pool? Uh, seven as well. Seven, a tie, okay. Either of you can uh, lead the effort and make the roll. Add two dice to the pool as a bonus for teamwork. Mm, gonna burn a willpower. Four. Four successes. So, each of you grip one end of the gigantic support beam. And using strength of your vitae, begin to lift. There's a shivering shock that runs through the wall. Ceiling quivers, shakes, Fuck. and you know you haven't got it. You have two choices. You can lower the beam, try again, or you can try to snap it off her and hope for the best. Annie, if you kill us, I swear to fuck. Gentle, put it back down. Lower it gently. I would just say, when I see them struggling with it, I say in her ear, I'm like, if they bury us in this place, we'll be here together. I'm not leaving you. I would like to try again. Hmm? Uh, I'll make the roll then. Same roll, same number of dice. You know from the way the timber shifted, you almost had it. You're close. Wait, wait. Are you sure you guys don't want to go up, just in case? I'm not going anywhere. I'm not leaving her. I'm oh, good. Well, I'll be here. That's five, and why not? Six successes. The exact number needed. Teamwork wins. So, gripping both ends of the wooden beam again, you brace yourselves and spin the timber as you lift, standing it up on its end to help shore up the sagging ceiling. There's a moment where you think it's gonna give way, but you manage to wedge the end of the support beam back into place. Ah, stay in school, kids. It'll, it'll hold, at least for a while. And this reveals the rest of Nelly. Good job. Pulling clothing. You're so strong. Can I, can, strong. Can, I, can I lift her off of the, the thing that she's in front of? You want to try to lift her off the wooden stake. I, I mean, if I look at you and I'm like, can, can I pick her up now? Can, I mean, I don't, sure, if you can pick up a person, I don't know how strong you are. I'm trying not to drop the roof on her head. So oh, yeah, go ahead, pick yeah. her up. Yeah, she's fine. Yeah. So, you kneel down, slide your arms under her body. It's so strange because it's a little bit like trying to shift a, a beautiful broken mannequin. She's so immobile. The sound the wood makes as it scrapes against bone and flesh is awful. You don't like the sound of it and you'd be happy never to hear it again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're almost there, we're almost the there. The instant that the wood leaves her body and she's in your arms, her eyes blink, her mouth twitches, and she can move. <gasps> Shut up before this place falls down! We, we gotta get out of here, we gotta get out of here. I know, I got you, I got you, I got you, let's go. 
I'm holding that support <laughs> pole. Just bring her out of here so this place doesn't kill us. I look at you, Jasper. I don't think I can jump high enough. Oh I grab a hold of Nelly and I leap out of the pit. Can I make the leap? Yeah. yeah. I can leap six meters straight mm-hmm. up. You can do it. Make it, a check. Because you said it's 10 feet deep? It's about 15. 15. 15. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, what check do you want me to make? I'd like you to make strength and athletics. All right. 15 is my upper limit, and I'm would be carrying. You can. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then, I mean, that's why I thought I could. No worries. <laughs> oh, God. All right, fine. Another point of willpower. What is, did you see we used up all the good rolls? We, we burned our mm-hmm. luck early. There we go. That is uh, five successes with a more, critical. More than you need. You're able to clear the hole in a single leap with Nell in your arms. You reach the top. You're standing at the edge of the hole with the agents looking at you, um, deeply impressed and a little scared. Squats. Whatever you say, sir. And I carry her over to one of the pews and set her down on it. I jump out also, because I uh, can't do it by myself. Allie, you know? Allie, Allie up Gregory. I boost oh, him up. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh. She's stronger than she looks. <sighs> and I climb up. Now you're all back on the main floor of the church chapel. Had to be a fucking vampire cop. Emily, are you okay? <laughs> I'm just okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they took who? Who? My sister. Oh, good. Everybody has family. Your mother. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, where is she? I don't know. After they got you, they both booked out. Who? See where they went. Who? What? There was a chick with long dark hair with and the ghost. They both left after Nelly got staked. The woman with the long dark hair. She was she solid? Yeah, it was a person. It was that- Petronella. She was in my sister's body. Oh. <laughs> we've we've got to get out of here. We've got we like no matter what we cannot be here right now. Can you walk? I'm so thirsty. Oops. I'm like, him, my guys, what do you need? Just tell me what you need. Anything. I'm like, you know what? Save it, Greg. Oh, uh, and- sh- 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 <gasps> fucking come here. Fucking damn it. I'm s- no, I'm so sorry, no. It's fine, just do it. I won't do that to you. I know you need it. If the roles were reversed, you'd do the same for me. Just fucking do it. I bite. It's painful at first, like the sting of the doctor's needle, but the pain fades immediately, and it is exquisite. It's peaceful and soothing. It's like being smothered in honey. And you know that if she doesn't stop, you'll let her take it all. Oh. Nelly, you're at four hunger. How much do you take? Just enough to like clear all of this. Nelly. Two? Yes. No. A few moments later, she removes her fangs. <gasps> <sighs> <sighs> I look it close. So oh, fuck. You seal the wound so that there is no evidence of the feeding. And you were at two hunger. Okay. It's been a long few fucking days. We need to get out of here. We can talk in the car. Days? Yes, three. Let's go. I got your message. It's been 72 hours. Oh. Look, I need I need a minute, okay? Before you all take off, just give us a second, all right? I'd like to take Nelly aside for a moment. The uh, security team signals that um, 
coast is clear so far, sir. Would you like us to start the cars? Yes, please. We're getting out of here. Yes, shortly. sir. Where will we be going? Back to the club. Yes, sir. We'll get it done. Unseen passage. You vanish from view. And I stay in the room. Annabelle, do you leave the room? Okay, yeah. You exit the church back out into the parking lot. What about you, Victor? I walk out also. And give them the privacy they've asked for? Yeah. So, in a few moments, Greg and Nelly, as far as you know, you are alone. You okay? I will be. Look, I, 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 uh, I didn't want to bring him in. I didn't want to involve them, but. You did what you had to do, and I thank you so much for helping me. There was no me. choice. I know. I'll deal with it. And that was not going to be a fun conversation, so I pity you that. But, um. You need to go home and rest. Yeah. Look, I'm, uh. Glad you're okay, and I'm sure they'll take care of you. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head back to the flat, and okay. uh, you know you can you can call, but uh, I just I need a breather. I get it. I need a break for a minute, you know. Thank you, thank you for everything, truly. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'll see you. Bye, Daffodil. Greg Demetrios, you exit the church, and you go your own way. Adios, Vic. Outside the church, the security team, as good as their word, has made sure that the perimeter is clear, the cars are running, and when Nellie exits, she exits alone. I would actually like to say something to Annabelle before she comes out, so when they have their moment, I, when we get outside, I say, um... Mm -hmm. I'm kind of looking up at the at the cross on the church, and I say, um, Jasper's Haven. Again, not wanting us to know about it. My boys, Eleanor, we all got our secrets. I'm sure she had her reasons. I destroyed Blaine for collaborating with the Inquisition. That is what got him the final death. This is what got him the final death. How could she do this to us? I... Nellie lies and she lies and she lies, but she has her reasons. She does it for us, or at least I think she thinks she does. She's like a mama bear, and she's gonna do whatever it takes to protect her cubs. What am I supposed to do when the person that I would die for has done something that I should kill her for? You talk to her. You talk to her and you find out why she did this. You're not judge, jury, and executioner for this. You're the person that she obviously loves most in this world. So let her explain herself to you. That's what you don't understand, Annabelle, is yes, I am. And that can be when she comes out of the... When Nellie exits the church, she exits alone. You know what? Let's just get in the car. Let's just, let's go. I continue over to the car and get in. I'm still invisible, but I follow into the car. So you make sure to sidle up to an open door. I actually open a, the back door before I get in the front door. <laughs> and I sit down. It's good to have colleagues who understand you. Yeah. So, in a few moments, you are all in one of the SUVs together. Yeah. The security team in the other SUV. And I become and visible you, once I'm sitting in there. Ah, mm. so now you are seen. Mm. And very shortly, you are on your way back to Club Maharaja. What? It's just always unsettling. Oh. Sorry. It's fine. Is she, are they? Yeah. <sighs> Nellie. Are you okay? 
No. What's this about your sister? Petronella went into my sister to talk to me, saying that my uncle, her uncle, found a way out of Griffith Park. I mean, this this is the old boundary of Griffith Park, I think, but I mean, further than this? Yes. He's the reason why I ended up in that hole. Well, but if he wanted to get out of Griffith Park and he's out of Griffith Park, then I mean, doesn't that make him not our problem now? Oh, it's an even bigger problem for me. Is Petronella working with him? No. I have a feeling Petronella has to do what he says. Mm-hmm. Is your sister hurt? Did they hurt her? Oh, no. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. We'll get her back. Did they say anything about where they're going? Not that I can remember right now. Greg would remember, probably. I, it just all happened so fast. He said he didn't know. Maybe Eva can can do something. Um. I have a thought. I don't know. I just I heard a rumor about where she was buried, where she where where she died. It's still in Griffith. Roughly, what time is it? Mm. So. This time of night, you've got maybe 45 minutes before you need to meet. We have to go back. Therese is coming. I... Therese is coming to the club in... What? 45 minutes. What? Why? We what? don't know. Barren stuff. It's been a busy 72 hours. Yes, it is barren stuff, but she wants to meet with all of us. And after that, after that's finished, we will go and we'll get your sister. Look, we have some leads and, and some history about it. Like, we can chase those down later, but yeah, this seems important. Nellie, why did you lie to us? Why do you keep lying to us? Lie, that word doesn't quite convey the scope of this particular betrayal, but yes, I would love to know the answer to that. I want to protect all of you. I want to take care of all of you. You guys, I care a lot about you, Victor. And knowing that he was still alive after the club, he was more useful to us alive than he was dead. And if anybody else found out, you guys wouldn't be tied to it. I would. I would be the one who'd be killed, not any of you. But if he was still alive and all of you knew about it, we would be all at stake. So I took it upon myself. I didn't want any of you guys to get hurt by that. I'm sorry. I am so sorry I lied. But I had to protect you. All of you. Even you, Jasper. No, oh, thanks. I'm so appreciative of all the things you've done. Look, I understand lying to protect people. We all, to some extent, have to do that. But we're adults. We should have some choice in this matter, and we all look out for each other. You're right. Absolutely right, Annabelle. There are things that I have done in my past that I I can't ever take back. But there are decisions that I have made to take care of myself and now you guys. So please understand that when I make a choice, it is not to hurt you guys in any way possible. 
that doesn't work like that. You can't just say that there's a blanket umbrella over everything I do and none of it's to hurt you because people hurt each other all the time and people make decisions for selfish reasons and they don't think of others all the time. So that blanket statement of I'll never do anything to hurt you is bullshit. I try not to hurt you guys. And I'm sorry that I'm not perfect like you, Jasper! Oh yeah, I'm perfect. Yeah, give me one mistake that you've done, hmm? You know, right Oops. now is not the time to try and make this about him. Because for months now, apparently the entire time we've known Annabelle, you've been hiding uh, ghosts and hallucinations and collaborating with the Inquisition and, and doing- And a sister. And a sister. What have You're you... gonna get on me about my sister when you have two kids? Not one, two! What have you been honest about in the last calendar year? Because we rushed to save you again. I do it again in five minutes. I'm going to rush to save your sister tonight because that's what we do, we cover each other. That's what we do. If you notice, Statistically speaking, it's the shit that we don't tell each other that puts us in mortal risk time and time and again. So is there anything else that you would like to volunteer now that might be relevant before somebody else drops it on my head like a 10 ton sack of fucking bricks? No. Nellie, and I take her hand from the back seat. I am of the opinion that your past informs who you are but doesn't have to define you. And you made some bad mistakes in the past. But we're moving forward now and we all want to protect each other. I want to protect you and I can't do that if I don't know if you're hiding something that could hurt yourself or others. I promise you if there's anything else that you need to tell us, you can tell us. I will put my life on the line for you, but I just need to know everything I can to make it worth it. Everything? All of us are gonna share everything. This isn't about us right now. But it is. If I'm gonna trust all of us, then all of us have to come out with our stuff. So how can you expect me to be different than all of you? Because there is a big, big difference because between me not mentioning children or not mentioning girlfriends or not mentioning havens. I'm Baron of the Valley because Isaac had to get it, give it over rather than let it come out that he was even third party related to associating with the Inquisition. Don't you remember that? That's how all of this happened. I can't protect you from this. This thing you were trying to protect us from, that is a catastrophic black mark. What if the fucking Camarilla finds out about this? They won't. Yeah. Just like they didn't find out about all the other stuff. Look, did- What other stuff? Everything. The sheriff showed up the other night. The guy I killed? Oh yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, I was like in torpor or- You were there on the days? roof of the grove, you saw it. You, it Apologies. That, what even happened? The last time we saw you, you were going into a parking deck at the grove. We were all left, I got you text, I got your little blue heart, I knew you were fine. Tell me what happened to get from the grove to staked in a hole in Los Feliz with a hunter. I got attacked by La Sombra. <laughs> Um, so I know we're having a night, but I got attacked by La Sombra. It's not something that you just sort of like idly drop in conversation. What do you mean a La, you got attacked by La Sombra? Did you kill them? Got away before I was able to. Uh, new vocabulary word for Annabelle. Ah, La Sombra. Oh, right. man. Get to the dictionary again. La Sombra are another vampire clan. 
Ugh, generally, how many of there are? Lots. Lots. This one, generally not associated associated with either the Anarchs or the Camarilla. Generally, this is one associated with the Sabbat. Mm. The bad ones. The really bad ones. The ones that are like, people bad, we're above them sort of thing. Right. Embrace the beast. Lately, they seem to be showing up more and more friendly. Kind of. It's a weird situation. I don't really know what's going on. But generally, you don't see them very often. They, uh work really well with shadow. Mm-hmm. Spooky. You know, mm-hmm. my clan, Ventru, business. We influence people through money. We pull a lot of strings. A lot of times, La Sombra tends to work through the church. Doesn't matter which church. Religions. That's their way of influencing people and pulling strings. Literal, Corruption in church and things Literal like puppet that. masters. Gross. Yeah. So, the cams got at least one Lasom. Mm, wouldn't necessarily say it was Cam either. So Excuse me. Didn't say. Wait, hang on. So you're saying either some unaffiliated Lasombra just happened to be there with the Camarilla Sheriff, or possibly there's a Sabad presence in Los Angeles. Possibly. I don't have the intel to figure that out. So by the time I was able to actually figure out that it was La Sombra, I got a phone call from my sister saying that she needed help. What was I supposed to do? Call you guys and say, hey, I'm gonna go help my sister. Yes. Yes, yes. that's exactly, exactly what you should do. That is the literal do. call. No, I freaked out I went to my sister Apologies for going to support my family that's still alive. Ow. You're running blindly into a situation that you have no idea what's going to be there helps zero people. Look, just next time, know that you have a whole group of people that are very good at punching things or disappearing or talking at people <laughs> that are at your disposal at literally any time of the night. But that's for future reference, okay? Like, I understand being scared and worried, but you have to trust us if you want us to trust you, Nellie. We need to get ready for Therese, but I need you to understand we're not done with this Demetrios thing. And I don't know where it's gonna go. I also really don't like that you made him a ghoul. Well, the blood bond, that was smart. He, you did bloodbind him, didn't you? Mm-hmm. He trusts you so much, Nellie. He has no choice but to trust you. Don't mess with him. Not messing with him. I need you to understand something also. There's no guarantee that we're not going to destroy him. We can't necessarily let a mortal, an FBI agent mortal, walk around knowing all about us. Former FBI. And that's all I got, yeah, okay? I was about to say, you had one point. Mm. It's a good one, but you got one. <clears throat> you are nearly <clears throat> back at the club as you pull down Hollywood Boulevard. I have one concern before we meet with Therese. <clears throat> Many concerns. Right, that thing. But one primary concern. Only a few people knew the Weird Sisters were coming. She was one of them. Yeah. If she tipped over the Camarilla, that could be a real problem for us. Yes. I don't know Therese, I know her mostly by reputation. Like I said, her sister Jeanette is a legend. Therese is the Baron. I don't know what this is about. What should we do with the sisters? Keep them out of sight? Yes, we don't admit that they're even there, honestly. All right. Yeah, keep them out of sight. I mean, but X set up this meeting, like, yeah, he, he wouldn't did. do anything to... He'd do what his Baron commands. No matter how well you know someone, another kindred, 
never assume they will never hurt you. Maybe they're trying to protect you. Or they owe more loyalty to someone else than they do you, no matter how much they like you. As you pull <clears throat> off the street into the parking lot, the headlights of your vehicle and the one following you with the security team pick out a disturbance. Several of your team are outside the club and they have surrounded a young man. You can see this very clearly as you pull in. Campbell is already in motion. The security car stops. He and the team emerge and go to join the other security guards who have formed a circle around this person. In the lamps of the parking lot and in the headlights, you can see that he is a young man, maybe um, in his early 20s. He's wearing a denim jacket covered with uh, 40 or 50 different musical band patches, some of which are Temple of Boom performers. Dirty jeans, motorcycle boots. He seems very calm, very collected, not at all concerned by the security guards surrounding him. I recognize him. He doesn't look familiar to you. It's possible that he could have been a patron at the club and on some night, but there are hundreds of people who come to the club on any given night, and maybe a thousand on the weekends. What's going on? And you guys know this kid? <sighs> Jasper, are you visible in the SUV? Can you be seen in the glow of the dome light? I have not, yeah, I am visible inside the SUV. The young man turns toward the vehicle that you're all in, and he waves, and you think he is looking at you. Who is that? Who knows you? No one knows me. I mean, no, he, he he's came, clearly no. waving at you. Wait, Do he's not waving at him. 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 He's in the back seat. No. I... He doesn't look familiar to you. A few moments later, after Campbell has had a word with the young man, he <clears throat> returns to the SUV <coughs> and speaks to you through your roll-down window. Uh, sir, um, this young man... Um, Says he has something for Mr. Jasper. He said Jasper's name. Yeah. That is very upsetting. Take him inside. We'll meet him in a minute. But put some guys on him, too. Yes, sir. What the fuck? Uh, and I direct our guy to drive us into the garage. So a few moments later, your vehicle is parked in the underground garage, and you can emerge. So by my estimation, we have 10-ish minutes before an unstable, egomaniacal, immortal monster rolls in for purposes unknown. So could you explain briefly why that kid knows your name? I cannot. I literally have no idea. Nobody knows you're alive. Nobody who's human knows I exist. Did that kid look... Is that the guy... Oh, sorry. Uh, did that kid look kindred? You said you ran, an old acquaintance might have made you. Was it that kid? Might have made me? Seen you. Oh, yeah. Right. That's not that person. And even if that old acquaintance did see me, I really don't look like what I used to look like. How do you want to play this? Do you want me to do my thing? Do you want to talk to him? Like I want to know what he is and what he has, because I'm very curious. And if it's bad, well, there's places we can put him until after Terry sleeps. I don't like the sound of that. Do you want to get changed? I mean here, not my Time. place. You never met the sisters. Um, well, real quick, because again, time is getting even shorter. We recovered the Tremere. They're staying here. We're not telling Therese that they're here. But, I'm not even listening to yeah, Victor. Uh, just... You get changed. Join us momentarily. Um, talk to him. Do you want to come in like this? Do you want to come in hidden? Like He obviously you... has seen me and knows what I look like and waved at me. I still don't so, think he was waving at you. I think he's I, waving at me. You were in the... I, calm your ego. I'm going to go and find him. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with him. It's not hard to find. The security team has him <clears throat> on the dance floor, surrounded on the main level of the club. 
again, he seems calm and unperturbed and I'm pleased to see you all. Hey, 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 I got something for you. Who are you? Well, I'm, I'm Tony. Tony. Hey, hey, relax, relax. I work forever. Oh. I got something for you. Okay. He reaches into his denim jacket pocket and he pulls out um, looks like a little glass jar in the shape of a skull. It's sealed with some black wax and it contains a, a bright blue liquid. Yeah, she said, uh, come here, give you this. What? I do odd jobs for her, run errands, you know. What's in it? Uh, search me. Hey, you Annabelle, right? Yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, I'm Tony. How you doing? Hey, nice yeah, to meet you. Yeah, it's good to meet you. Tony? Yeah. How am I supposed to drink it? Uh, I got a message for you. Yes, that would be most helpful. You want me to tell you? Yes. Are all of them uh, okay. like this? Uh, the message is, uh, hang on, give me, give me a second. Um, Jasper. Yes. Put this on if you want to heal the pain. Will you trust me? <laughs> Eva. That's the message. Oh. Oh. Nice. oh, way weirder than I thought it was gonna be. Hey, you're Mr. Temple. I eat And you're maybe. an LAG. Hey, how you doing? I'm Tony. Tony, I need you to do me a favor. Yeah. We've got some very important guests that are going to be here imminently. I'm gone, I'm gone. Actually, I need you to not be gone. But you, they're, you hang out? They're probably gonna be keeping an eye on this place. You got Wi-Fi? Uh, I do. Upstairs in the studio, it's fantastic. Uh, this guy, and I just point at the nearest guy, I'm like, is gonna stay with you and make sure anything you need. Okay. And uh, a little later, as soon as our guests are gone, you'll be free to... Sounds great. So just like, on the... I would assume uh, you huh? and Tony. Yeah. What's your name? Yeah, yeah. When you leave, you can tell Eva that I do trust her. Tell Eva you do trust her. Yeah, I can do that. And? And I'm going to apparently apply an ointment to my burns. <sighs> no, Sit down, Annabelle. No other, me uh, yeah, I, I was, Annabelle, I'm, I'm with you on this. You got oh, stuff to eat here too? Um, You know what? Super hungry. What did I miss? <sighs> we'll eat. It's a it's a thing, uh, Eva. It's not a thing. Yeah, no, it's she brought him flowers. It's a thing. Uh, you know what? Oh Actually, Tony, uh, if you need to go, no, nah, I can hang. All right, hang. Cool, brother. We'll talk after. You and bet. I, I do have the security. I'm like, like food. They'll get you set up with whatever you need. Cool. Flowers? Yeah, it was. She a, brought everybody flowers. Mm, he got a red rose though. What? Oh, I, I'm out of boom. I, Jasper. Intelligence plus a cult. <clears throat> it's been it's been an eventful few days. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six successes. Mm. Well, you're not certain what it is, but you're certain what it isn't. It isn't a normal natural substance. It's got a strange viscosity and. Now that you can see it up close, a luminescence. It seems to glow from within. You are fairly certain that this is some sort of magic elixir. You don't know if it's been made with blood magic or some other means of enchantment. Annabelle, she made him a love potion. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, put it on, seriously. Yeah. I, I open it up. Mm. And I am going to. You remove the wax seal. I remove the wax seal. Yeah, it smells like um, it smells like juniper. It's very fresh. It reminds you of a uh, uh, forest. And you, uh, when you touch it, it's warm. It's like touching hmm, liquid sunlight without the burn. It feels great on the on the skin. I apply it to the burns. Make a rouse check. <laughs> Just one, though. Success. The remaining 
aggravated wound heals instantly. <clears throat> the burn fades, the skin, precisely as it was three nights ago before your face was torched. Repair yeah. all! <coughs> That's Keep... incredibly useful. Huh? Yeah, for you especially. Now, ordinarily, you would have had to tempt the beast considerably more to achieve the same effect. Yes. Somehow, the salve or the ointment or the elixir has done the same healing work at a third of the cost. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Eva. Hmm. I wonder if it's because she wanted you pretty or she wanted to stop the pain. Unfortunately, the elixir does not improve your appearance. It simply restores it to its normal undead state. We have to talk to Therese. This isn't about me. Yeah, any second now. Uh, any final preparations? Mm. Ellie. I'm gonna go change. You know where the wardrobes are upstairs, mm -hmm. of course. I'm going to wait in the office, and I'm going to put my gun in the desk drawer. I don't want it on me, because I don't want her to feel offended, but I want it close. <laughs> so you're not gonna lock the dress desk drawer as you would normally, you wanna make sure you can reach the gun. Yes. When you need it. Yes. And it's loaded. Always. Of course. Did I use all the ointment? Roughly half. I need a... Mm, Ziploc bag. One of the security guards attends to that command and makes sure that Jasper gets what he needs. I pour the rest in and put the bottle in there. And, and seal, it, and shut. seal it, it shut. And then I put it in my bag. So you will carry it with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, while Nellie's in the room, the door's closed, I uh, sit by the door kind of scratch at it. Nelly? Yes? I s you kind of make it hard to sometimes, but I, I still trust you. I open the door. I, I, You saved me from Nick, really honestly. I couldn't, I couldn't kill him. And you did. You saved those that I care about, you would have hurt them. And in some ways, if I believed in it, you kind of saved my soul. I'm not gonna ever forget that. Please know that you can trust us. This seems like an excellent place to take a brief pause in our story. Hello, and welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, LA by Night. Season two, episode four, Teardrop. All right, so again, Therese, Baron of Santa Monica, very wealthy, very powerful. Can't really trust her because we can't trust any of us. So, but respect, she's incredibly dangerous. Yeah, this isn't a, hey, if things go bad, we can fight our way out of a situation kind of situation. It's not. Well, it's always been that way though. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be this time. You know the things I can do? The forgetting and the all that? She can do a lot more. All the things you've seen X do, she can do a lot more. All the shadowy things you've seen him do, she can do a lot more. And that's what we know of. Oh, shit. Yeah, so we're gonna try and use our words. Mm -hmm. Good. Your phone, Victor. Good. Buzzes, yeah. it is Campbell. Good, 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 good. good yes, sir. Cool, cool. Sir, everything is ready. 
the young gentleman who is visiting Mr. Jasper is on the third floor. He is in a meeting room. Uh, we've given him some refreshment as you instructed. He has the guest Wi-Fi code. Uh, do I understand, sir, that he is not to leave? Uh, make sure he stays upstairs. Make sure our other three guests remain downstairs. It is imperative that our imminent arrivals do not know they're down there. Understand, sir. I believe we can see her vehicle approaching. She'll be turning into the parking lot any moment now. Uh, feel free to tell them um, who's visiting. They have a right to know. Very well, sir. When... Uh, when Miss Therese arrives, show her up? Yes. Um, pay her every respect. She is a very important guest. We understand, sir. So n no ideas about what this could be about? Well, there's probably about all that in the inevitable impending war that's about to drop on all of us, if I had to wager a guess. Oh. But it could be about anything, really, considering... It could be about anything. She is uh, making some very aggressive business expansion. She may just want to talk to me about that, but she has to speak to all four of us. So, so it's unlikely. Unlikely. Baron Therese. Okay. Oh. Um, hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for having me here. I'm so delighted to meet each and every one of you. Nice place, Victor. Thank you for traveling all this way to meet with us. We really appreciate it. Well, I had to meet this motley crew of yours. Besides, we have a lot to talk about. I presume you're Annabelle? Yeah. My protege ex speaks very highly of you, you know. You have a lot of fire inside of you, and I can tell. I just hope that we can put a direction to it. Yeah, that's what they all seem to think. X is a little upset with me right now because um, I lost my temper at him. You see, I'm very protective of him. So do take good care of my boy. Of course. Mm -hmm. He's the best. X is the best, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. X yeah. is great. Sure. I'm really glad to hear that you take really good care of him. I'm trying. X is wonderful, but he is a little more confused. And sometimes I am afraid that he might go down the wrong path. But that's not why I'm here. Mm. I believe congratulations are in order, Victor, Baron, and how do you like it so far? Uh, every night has been an adventure, Baron, but I, I don't have to tell you about the burdens of running a business empire, of running a barony, of, you know, dealing with uh, <laughs> wayward members of your group. You certainly don't, and Miss Nelly. You are a business m a member as well. But of course. Yes. It's a pleasure to finally meet your acquaintance. You know, I'm very, very much looking forward to your summer life. Oh, yes, yes. Um, I believe we have a working title of Anticipation. Oh. Anticipation. Well, I will work eagerly title. await what that. Yeah, it'd be a lot of like. fun. I would love to collaborate with you at some point. Hmm. So you have great fashion sense. Well, if we're alive, in the next few months. I would love that. Oh. And you must be Jasper? Yes. Congratulations. You have a real fighting spirit, and it takes a lot of skill to do what you did. Yeah. A lot of guts, in fact. I feel that if we do not rally and show the um, perspicuity that Mr. Jasper has shown, we might not exist. Uh, you know, when you said you were coming to visit, I was really hoping your sister Jeanette was going to join us. I'm a big fan of her work. Yours as well, of course, but I was hoping I could meet both of the sisters. Is that, uh, is she going to be joining us? No, Jeanette is whoring around at her usual spaces. Oh, I don't like that Probably language. is taken up with X. Um, I'm sorry, I apologize. I'm very concerned for my sister at the moment. She has fallen down a dark path. You, I don't think I need to tell you that my kind, the Malkavians, suffer from quite a stigma. And she's really leaned into it. Mm. That's why I care so much about X. She's really taken up with him, and I just would like to see him put his energy towards something more productive. Hmm. Well, it's obvious that. that you care very much about those that are close to you. 
and they're very lucky to have you. I would do absolutely anything for my kind. And in that, we also are in agreement. So yes, please give your sister our regards, and I guess uh, we can uh, get on to it. I, I spoke with Isaac, uh, Baron Abrams, mm. uh, immediately after the events at the Grove, and I said, personally, I thought we should attempt diplomacy with the CAM, and if they're not willing to talk, then we should be prepared to honestly strike first if necessary. I don't think we can leave them unchecked. They're already making subtle moves against us, and I don't think their subtlety will last. Well, I agree with you. I believe that we are at the absolute verge of something big. I don't want to use the word war, but violence has already happened. And with that, I would like to talk a little bit about your strategy and where you're coming from, because I myself have been critical of the way the Anarchs have been running things. I think that we could be a lot more effective and a lot tighter. I don't think that public violence is a great idea right now. Is this something that you're willing to insinuate? Is this something that you are hoping to happen? Believe it or not, I hope for diplomacy. I feel like the shared risks bearing down on all kindred far exceed our and our Camarilla squabbles. Mm. I don't know that Vannevar Thomas is going to see it that way. Mm. And Vannevar. obviously, we are not going to just roll over and beg them to rule over us. So if they won't talk. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're prepared to fight. Annabelle. You have been mentioned as something of a pacifist. Uh, I don't care much for conflict, no. I... I think that the Anarchs squabbling amongst themselves and protecting their fiefdoms is going to be the death of us. I think that we need to unite together. I don't want it to come to war. That's, nobody ever wants it to come to war. But I don't think that things as they are now can stand. If no. the Camarilla. Camarilla. Sure, if you want to say it like that. But not with the not Italian with the hands. hands, no. Remember no. those clans that we talked about, that there's a lot of them? There's one that just don't. That's Italian? Yeah. Well, I'm they, so they sorry. I'm still them. learning things. Yes. But I. Uh, they will stop at nothing to hurt people, to have power over people, to control people. And by us not taking a stand against it, that's as good as us perpetrating those acts of violence ourselves. Well, I appreciate your zeal. Now tell me. How many of your kindred are you willing to see die for the cause? I don't want anybody to have to die. Mm. This is what we must think about. If a war is truly coming, how much of our own are we willing to spare? Is there a smarter way to do it? I understand some of you have no problem with bloodshed. And for Miss Annabelle, well, there will become a time where it's kill or be killed, and I would just hate for that day to catch you off guard. I don't want to see anybody killed, but that being said, I will lay down my life if it's for what's right. Sounds like she's adjusting. You were there at the Succubus Club. You saw what they did. That sort of thing besides being monstrous, risks us all. We can't let the Camarilla go out performing indiscriminate massacres. We can't let anyone do that. I absolutely agree. And that's why I think there may be a clever way to get around this with as little violence as possible. What do you have in mind? Well, maybe we play ball. Maybe... <sighs> We should entertain the idea of giving them a little something. As long as we can preserve our autonomy, who knows? The Camarilla has infinitely more resources than we do. They will crush us. 
Oh, I really wish Jeanette were here. Um, as far as I can tell, uh, Vanivar strolled right in and sort of carved a piece off of your domain and Isaac's and Nine's and just sort of planted his flag and set up camp on your back step and none of you did anything about it. So it seems like you're already playing ball. You're already collaborating. And how has that worked out for you so far? Well, first let me mention that if my syphilitic sister was here, she would not be getting anything done. She would be rolling under the tables. She may be more likable, and I understand that I'm not exactly a friendly person, but I care deeply about my kindred, and I care deeply about the future of Los Angeles. That's why I'm willing to consider every option. I'm sure the Camarilla has reached out to you as the newest Baron. I have been have approached. Have they offered you any deals? Uh, I have been offered uh, communication with Prince Thomas, which at the time I said I was willing to do. I've sent out uh, feelers through a couple of different avenues, letting it known I am willing to sit down and talk. I am willing to negotiate. I am not willing to suddenly become a third-rate vassal uh, in Vannevar Thomas's new domain. I'm not the best student of history, but I do know quite a bit of kindred bloodshed went into the forming of the Anarch Free States, and I would rather not barter it away for the sake of holding on to our tiny little piece of land. Hmm. Now, Victor, I understand that you have a healthy appetite for power. <laughs> as one must to climb the corporate ladder, as you well know. Absolutely. <laughs> Have you been offered anything? I'm thinking they'll probably pull out all the stops in order to tempt you to their side. Has anything enticed you? I think that it's best to be honest. You know, um... I don't think that there's any price that they could offer him where he'd take it. Isn't that right, Victor? We have a saying with our little group here that the only free cheese is in a mouse trap. Mm. So. You know who loves cheese is X. And my sister. Where is X at the moment? Yeah, why isn't he joining? Why didn't you he called and text Jeanette? You know, she's probably the one to ask about X. I'm sorry. I think that we should. <sighs> Stage a coup. Oh. What do you think? Of all of us, you have the most insight to their inner workings. <laughs> what do you think should be our approach to dealing with Vanivar? I believe that uh, negotiation is in order, uh, absolutely. But I think one has already been had. Uh, off a roof, and then detached at the neck. Mm. No. Exactly what I was thinking, Annabelle. Therese, what did they offer you? Well, I've been playing ball, as they say. I haven't accepted anything, but I've allowed them to be in Santa Monica because I believe it's best to know your enemy. You see, I think that the only smart way to do this without killing most of us is to do it from the inside. Hmm. I agree. So you're learning everybody's weakness, no? I think it's important to know. And then you're probably going to sell that information to the Camarilla so that you can protect your own and give up the rest of us, huh? My own? Yes. You mean Santa Monica? You mean Your kindred that you're so fond of. Let me tell you something about my kindred. We have been persecuted from day one. I know you know the stories about Malkavians and how they act. We have been disrespected, not allowed to flourish, not allowed to grow. That is why it is imperative that we make a move that is to be respected and feared. You know, humans speak a lot about mental health awareness, neurodivergencies. I think that we should take a cue from them do you think that the Camarilla will give that to you? Absolutely not. 
but I think that it's best to maintain an illusion of peace, acquiesce, maybe even give them something. What if they give you more? What are you insinuating? I'm just saying, how much are you willing to buy out? There is no buying out when you ultimately win. I would sell anything to protect my own autonomy, my freedom, and the safety of my fellow kindred. Jasper. Yeah. You know who she reminds me of? Who? I've heard this before. Tara. Huh. I was just going there. I think she offered, uh, I think they offered Tara similar terms. They did. And I think it went poorly for literally everyone. Tell me about that. I only know rumors. I only what I've heard what the word through the grapevine is, but one of ours, one of our fellow barons, was seduced by the siren call of the Camarilla by the belief that that golden leash and bejeweled cage might be worthwhile. And the last I'd heard, she'd gone missing. I don't know. I haven't seen her in ages myself. <laughs> you seem to be misunderstanding me. Do not mistake my criticism of the Anarchs and how disorganized and frankly sloppy we've been with allegiance to the Camarilla. You know, total freedom means the freedom to question your authorities. I think that you would agree with that. Okay, we do it. You know, we're gonna meet with uh, Nines and Isaac soon and we're gonna have this conversation. Are you intending to put this in front of them too or did you want to speak with us in private so that you know I'll back you? Absolutely not, I just wanted to see where you're coming from and to meet you. I'm very passionate about unity between the sects. And I know that if we don't play our cards right, there just won't be any of us left. Um, Teresa, I have a question. Your plan to let them in and to give them something and make them believe we're willing to play ball and then hurt them from the inside. My issue with that plan is that what happens when we do let them in and they do win and then we are on the inside and there is a lot more of them and they put us in a proverbial cage and we can't do anything what happens then? Well, I appreciate your candor and I think it's important to consider every option at this point now does this mean that you would prefer to just go in guns a-blazing? No. Do you think that that's the more prudent move? No, I don't. I think it's a stupid move. Hmm. I was merely just curious. Well, I think it's important to consider every option. I... What is that move, then? So you let them in, let them know you're willing to play ball, and hurting them from the inside is that sabotage? Is it tactical strikes? Is it rallying their own people against them? What do you see? Well, it depends on what our goals are. Personally, Santa Monica is seeing an absolute boon in profits due to the tech industry. I'm very happy with how my kindred are being received, being respected for the first time. And I'd like to see more of that. Now, I'm sure that's not an exclusive interest, I think you all have your own, I'm sure. The Fabric District, for example, downtown. Mm -hmm. You'd like to see that intact? Absolutely. My plan is to see exactly what we all need, and this is why I'm meeting with you, to figure out what you want. Because if we have a clear goal in mind, then we may just get it, fight or not. You know, I, I heard uh, also I wanted to congratulate you on your recent expansions mm. into traditionally um, anarch hostile territories. There are new clubs in Chicago, Louisiana, New Orleans. I, I mean, that's that's quite something. Did you, did you accomplish that through negotiations? Thank you very much. And yes, 
Frankly, when you're dealing with the enemy, you need to be a snake in the grass. There's only one little problem. They gave you the clubs, I understand, deals and bargains, and in order for you to get something, you have to give something. So what did you have to give for these land rights in these territories? I promise you, Victor, what I gave has absolutely nothing to do with the health of our kind. Therese, I'm going to make a roll for you. You have rather a lot of dice. <laughs> hmm. You're very observant. Something catches your eye. You glance upward. And on one of the exposed girders in this post-industrial style room, you see a rat, a large, brown, ordinary rat. It is perched on the edge of the beam, leaning over and looking at you all at the table very intently. After all, Victor, we all have our secrets. That, uh, that cougar thing that you had going on. Snake? It, 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 no, there was like cougars. X said you had like a cougar problem. Oh! In Santa, Santa Monica. They, is, that, is that solved? Is that? It's taken care of. Was it just like the one? Like, it, it, as far as I know. Hmm. I would say it's low on the priority list. Well, it's just last time I saw a cougar, it was a gangrel. That's why I just wanted to make sure you weren't having any other security issues. In your domain. Been to Beverly Hills lately? I'm not going to Beverly Hills anymore because apparently Vannevar Thomas thinks it's his. Right. Um, back to important things. So, what are you going to do with the information you get from us? What am I going to do with the information? Yeah. Well, it'll come up in a few weeks when all the barons meet. You know, I do not appreciate the lack of trust. I understand it, absolutely. I do believe that it is a carryover of the stigma of my kind, and no. I don't appreciate that. But I will say that for right now, we need to put aside the stiff differences and have a common goal. Miss Baron, I would never want you to assume that anything I said to you is based on your clan. I would never think about something coming, that you've said. Coming from my clan, with the stigma just as bad. Now, I am maybe distrustful of what you're doing, but please don't take it personally. I'm distrustful of everybody, including the three people I am sitting in this room with other than you. Such is the situation. Now, what I meant by that was, why did you need to meet with us first? I'm, that's, I'm just stuck there. I don't understand. We're very low on the power of totem pole here. Speaking personally. You would really like to know why I chose to meet with you first? Yes. Yeah, that's the question? Yes. I have a theory, but I would like to hear your answer, yes. I have a personal interest. X. Okay. He likes you all very much. Mm. Plus, I thought it would be the polite thing to do. I appreciate that. Uh, Annabelle. All of this politics, posturing, new to you. And I know you have a very strong sense of justice. So you know what you've seen, you know what you've heard. What do you think we should do? As my official advisor, how do you recommend we proceed? She is your official advisor? I listen to all of them. They have all spoken truth to me when I needed it. They have all been there for me mm. in my darkest moments. I trust them all implicitly. The rat seems very interested in this particular moment. It leans far out over the beam as if to make sure it can catch every syllable in its little brown ears. Mm. 
I think that all of this has gone on for far too long, that everyone has forgotten what it means to be human, what it means to have freedom. I think that there's squabbling over petty fiefdoms. I think that the Anarchs have become just as bad as the Camarilla. I think that we need to ignite the spark of revolution and burn it all to the ground and start over. Seems we have a young nihilist on our hands. I nihilists agree. believe in nothing. I believe in everything. I believe that we, that we each have control of our own destiny. It should be true for you and your people. It should be true of the clans that are mistreated. It should be true for the thin bloods. I say we burn it all down and start it over again in the ashes. So if that's what she thinks, what do you think Nines Rodriguez is gonna say to your sales pitch? You know, I really do admire this attitude. I haven't seen a rebellious spirit like this in a very long time and I do appreciate it. And I make absolutely no secret of my criticism of how the Anarchs are running things. I do believe major reform is in the cards for us. Now when you use the phrase burn it all down, that makes me think that you will recklessly get more people killed. We need to be smart. Mm, I agree with you. And with that, I'd like to ask a question. Why are we being watched? I thought you all were the seers. I don't. The uh, rat up there? No. Uh. You wouldn't happen to be planning some sort of backstabbing after I've been so generous. As weird as it is, that's our head of security. I would not allow any harm to come to you while you were in my domain on a diplomatic visit. I asked you about Gangrel in your area because I found they can be incredibly useful in mine. Is that so? And uh, your friend up here is gathering intel for what? Oh, my friend up there is just making sure that everything goes safely to all of our mutual protection. Well, I hope that means that you don't see me as a threat. Wouldn't dream of it, Baron. Just because I don't go rave on the weekends and pop Molly and have the irresponsible illicit sex oh, doesn't mean I can't be fun. I mean, you don't have to hold back. We're already dead. I take it Jeanette does that. Is My that sister has lived a very different life. Now, just because I'm questioning why you brought this to us, and why you came here doesn't mean I don't necessarily agree with you. I'm merely trying to figure out where we stand in this and why you came to us. Your plan is not bad, but you're gonna have a hard time convincing a lot of Anarchs to do that. Victor, your phone buzzes, it is Campbell. Mm-hmm. Sir? Yes. Is he on speaker? Uh, no, he is not on speaker. He's to my ear. Just uh, reflection. That's why I'm picking up. Uh, sir, um, so, um, well, we're going to have to talk about all these comings and goings in recent nights. But um, uh, a limousine has just pulled into the parking lot, and some gentlemen are emerging from it, and they appear to be headed to the door. Are they armed? One moment. At least one of them is. I, are you expecting anyone else joining us? No. There's a limousine outside, armed men. Are they coming in heavy or? No, 
No, they're just approaching the door. One moment, we'll greet them. Yes, please. He keeps the line open. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't have said anything. You can hear murmured voices. Sir. Mr. Chaz Price and his associates are here. Excuse me, who? I'm opening the door, sir. I know you are, Campbell. <laughs> and I hang up the phone. Uh, I'm like, excuse me, Baron, I have to get something out of the drawer right now. I don't want to offend you. What just happened? Hmm? I open the drawer and I take the gun out and you I say, take Chaz. The firearm out? Yes, the hunter weapon. I hold it up, I make sure she can see it though. And I say, Chaz Price is here. What? And British I talk, Chucky? Yes. British Chucky. He got past my security because they're, you know, can't stop. A that. few moments later, there is a knock. Did you know this was going to happen? Absolutely not. Mr. Price, please come in. Mr. Price is not alone. He has two gentlemen with him. One of them is almost as large as Mr. Lamb, who is in the employ of Miranda, mm. but much better dressed. Chauncey, good to see you again. The other is slender and rather whippet-like in his quickness. Both of them stand behind Mr. Price and wait for instructions. Well, hey, asshole. Good evening, everyone. Charming as ever, I see Jasper. And Baron Vaughan, how are things in Santa Monica? Very well. There's a scooter problem. Hmm. But we're managing. <laughs> right. I'm sure you have it well in hand. And may I say, you look as lovely as ever. Well, thank you. Your eyes sparkle like the morning dew. <laughs> well, we could trade pleasantries all night. Uh, ah, well, I, please don't. I am remiss. Hello, Baron Temple. Or should I say undisputed Baron Temple? <laughs> you know, absolutely, that is how you all should refer to it. I would love for that messaging to resonate all throughout the ivory tower. Oh, everyone has heard, I assure you. Undisputed Baron of the Valley. <laughs> Most impressive. We have been quite busy, haven't we? Haven't we all? To what do we owe this pleasure? Oh, this this is... oddly timed pleasure. Hmm, oddly timed, I will agree, and in such interesting surroundings. Hmm, no accounting for taste. Uh, but this is not a social call. I am here in my official capacity. <laughs> my official capacity as Herald. I. Herald to the Prince of Los Angeles, <laughs> Danavar Thomas. There is no prince in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, but there is, Baron. There is. Danavar Thomas has invoked the right of praxis. And I should let you know he expects all kindred residing in his city to follow his rules. I'm sure he does. What? You can just up and declare yourself a prince? Oh, you can declare this whatever you want. This is the most fucked up thing I have ever heard! I didn't elect him! You Come now, my dear, we need not slide headlong into vulgarity. Things I'm simply are honest. as they are. Praxis has been claimed. Claimed by Vannevar Thomas. He is the prince. And as I mentioned, there are a few rules who will be expecting everyone to follow. Uh, first of all, let me set everyone's mind at ease. Anarchs will be welcome in the Prince's domain, providing they follow the rules. Of course, the six traditions shall be respected and observed by all. I needn't bother enumerating them. Please, indulge us. <sighs> Are you telling me that you still have not had the six traditions drummed through your head? <laughs> no, 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 I have not. Mm, I suppose I shouldn't have expected any better. Very well, in short, the masquerade, the domain, the progeny, the accounting, hospitality, and destruction. That rule should be paid special attention. I just, I missed that one. 
Mm. You know, I was reading the thing and there was a page missing, and I just, I guess I skipped it. That's all right, that's all right. It's a fresh slate, after all. Everyone has time to study and educate themselves. I'm just here to tell you how things are. <laughs> so, to be clear, mm-hmm. Vannevar Thomas, after 90 years in San Francisco, lost his seat to one of his own and then fled south and thought he could just set up camp in Beverly Hills amongst the soft, bloated, spoiled, and indulged, and the rest of us would just say, oh, okay, thanks. We didn't think about just having a prince. Like, is that literally what you all think is going to happen? Is that literally how you think this is going to go? That's a rather lopsided view of affairs, but I suppose you're entitled to your own opinion as long as you obey the rules, if I may continue. In addition to the six traditions being followed, the prince will allocate domain and territory to kindred as he sees fit. This may result in some boundary changes to certain domains, but such is the way of the world. Furthermore, the prince has appointed a new keeper of Elysium. He has declared Maximilian Strauss of the Tremere clan as his keeper. Uh, Together they will choose new Elysia, and all kindred are expected to treat these locations as neutral ground. Uh, To keep us all safe, no more kindred business on technology. The prince was quite firm on this point, and he shall decide how to interpret and enforce this dictum. From time to time, the prince has decided that a blood tax shall be in order. When he does, he shall choose certain kindred. Those kindred are expected to deliver an appropriate vessel, which is to say, a mortal, to a place of his choosing. Are we clear thus far? Please Is, 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 is that all? Because I, I will save my comments till the end. Hmm. Yes, that's very wise of you. I see the mantle of responsibility has matured you, Mr. Temple. I try to be respectful to my guests in my domain. (laughs) Yes, do keep in mind that all domains fall within the prince's purview. Now, of course, all these rules, well, they will need someone to enforce them. And given that our former sheriff seems to be permanently indisposed. No, I, I suppose that happened. further heard... congratulations are in order. Wait. Jasper. Addendum to this. I'm sorry, wait. No, whatever you have to say is not important. What? Congratulations, Jasper, or should I say sheriff? <laughs> I'm changing sides. <laughs> I'm in. If it means your share, Wait, whoa, 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 if it means whoa, 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 you have to carry whoa, whoa, whoa. Camarilla water, I'll do it. Yeah, I'm in. Wait, <laughs> is that how, it's like the Santa Claus and you <laughs> off the sheriff and now you have to be the sheriff? <laughs> ah, sheriff Jasper. No, you have not heard the end of that, sir. There's a new sheriff in town. I'll get what? you spurs. No, you guys. I have cowboy hats. All right. I don't know why everyone is so surprised. I would think that murdering the former sheriff would imminently qualify Jasper for the role. I just hadn't... I just didn't think they would stoop so low as to want someone like me as a sheriff. Come now. Certainly I've displayed an amount of distaste for you, but I freely admit that you are formidable. (laughs) Very formidable. And, as such, you are the perfect person to enforce the prince's will. Mm, I see. You know, I understand you all do quite a bit by fiat, but I'm fairly certain if you look at the letter of the law, Vannevar had not declared praxis, therefore he had no sheriff, therefore Marcos just got ganked for no reason, Mm. so... There's been no sheriff destroyed. Therefore, there is no voluntary ancestral mantle to pass down. Baron Temple, I'm afraid I'm not the prince's solicitor. I I'm think that's herald. exactly what you were doing, is here selling <laughs> the prince. 
Uh, he has many people who can discuss the finer points of the law with you. I'm merely here to relay his will. His will that shall be carried out. Mm. Is that the last of it? Is there, is there more? I have a question. Of course, Baron. If we are implementing a blood tax, a fairly regular blood tax, where the citizens of Los Angeles will be disappearing from time to time, how exactly will we keep up the masquerade? Hmm. The masquerade is of primary importance. I assure you the prince would do nothing to jeopardize the masquerade. I'm sure that's true. Hmm. And I am sure you trust his judgment. Certainly. Good. Then it appears we're all in accord, yes? I, um, excuse my ignorance of Camarilla matters. Please, Sheriff, continue. But what exactly would my duties be as the new Sheriff? Much the same as the old Sheriff. Uh, do try to... I didn't really speak to him, honestly. He never saw me. Mm. I think that your duties will be made apparent to you. If the prince has any problems with how you're carrying out the duties of your office, I'm sure he'll let you know in no uncertain terms. Mm. I see. Has he selected Primogen yet? That, I'm afraid, is confidential for the moment. But I'm sure that as the undisputed Baron of the Valley, the Prince will want you kept informed of any important information. <laughs> clearly, clearly, yes. Which Miss Nelly. brings me to your presence so here. Why exactly are you meeting in this delightful location? I thought it was only proper. I'm one of the oldest Barons in Los Angeles. He's our newest. Ah, just... You know, we have quite a community here. Just a, a meet and greet, as it were. You could call it that. An exchange of important information among colleagues. I greatly value Baron Therese and her wisdom and insights and experience. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm, I'm Undisputed, sorry. Baron. Uh, before he said things that I wasn't listening to, you were going to ask something. Yes, I'm so sorry. Nellie! Yes? You've been so quiet, I just... I'm just wondering what you think of all this. Yes, Nelly. I'm curious myself. Hi, Chaz. Hello, dear. Don't even bother to say hello to me. You just trace right in here. I'm so very sorry. Mm. The new responsibilities of my office, you understand, but I would like a word with you. Would you? Yes, very much. Let me tell you how I think about this. This is bullshit. They shouldn't be marching in here and trying to take over. There's a reason why I left San Francisco in the first place. Yes. Yes, there are many reasons, aren't there, Nelly? So, the prince claiming praxis, did anybody challenge this at all? Or he just simply just plopped his royal behind in Beverly Hills, much like what Victor had just said. To my knowledge, the prince does not plop anywhere. No, <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure he plops. Nelly, I wonder if I might have a word. You know what, this time? No. No, you prefer no. that I say what I have to say in front of your friends? I can certainly do that. This will only take a minute. Well, of course, this is your coterie. No secrets in a coterie. Uh, Absolutely not. No, we are all open books with each other, but yes, if you feel like you need a moment to consult with Mr. Price, I would like to speak with Baron Therese, so yes, if you need a moment, please, sure. Just one moment. Just one moment. You've got So, Nelly and Chaz, you step away from the meeting area and find a more private corner where you hope you are out of earshot. Mm -hmm. Chester and Chauncey shall accompany us at a discreet distance, of course. <clears throat> well, my dear, we've gotten into all sorts of scrapes since last I saw you. Yes, well, it's been tough around here. Tough? Yes, I suppose it has. Nellie, dear, I'm willing to overlook 
gross disrespect you showed to me just now. If, if you are willing to be cooperative. What do you want? Well, what does anyone want? I want you to obey, Nelly. That is what I want. I want you to agree to whatever I propose. I will let you know when the time is right. But know that if you do not, and if this impertinence continues, I will have no choice but to speak to your boon companions about exactly what sort of being you are and what you've done. An apple from your tree? <laughs> My tree. I can't say as I've ever committed the sin that you have. Very few of our kind ever have, and those that have, they find themselves outcast, even among anarch scum. Fine. What is it that you want? Exactly. In detail. I will inform you. Just know that you must be pliable. Nelly, darling, this needn't be unpleasant. <laughs> Walk away. You're going to return to the meeting area? Mm -hmm. I believe I'm having a private moment. Yes, yes while this is occurring, um, you are having a private moment with Baron Temple in a different corner. Baron, such subordination. Insubordination. Are you quite aware of each member of your coterie's motivations? Far more than everyone else's, yes. Um, you know, Baron, um, it looks like we're out of time. I think the only question we really need to discuss at this exact moment is whether or not we're going to let Mr. Price walk out of here in one piece. I personally think we should. I would rather not force a conflict, but perhaps it's time for him to meet the final death as our official response. But I defer to you, Baron. I think you know where I stand. If I decide to destroy him, would you leap to his aid? Absolutely not. Hmm. I believe that we should wait. We have an opportunity now that Jasper is sheriff. Someone from the inside. I have to say, that puts great joy in my heart to hear. But really, again, uh, Vannevar is playing rather fast and loose with the rules, which is odd for someone of his age. But I am incredibly wary of actively antagonizing someone of his power and resources, at least before we talk to the other barons. It wouldn't be the first time you've done this. But I agree. I think that we should wait. Hopefully he does not force our hand. See, and I gave you a little spurs. And a big old shiny badge. I see it, yeah. No, I see it. I, I, yeah, that's an outfit. Howdy, partner. <laughs> this is the stupidest shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, did people actually follow these rules? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Jasper. Yes? I believe you have a very important task. Apparently I do. I quite agree with young Annabelle. I think it'd look good in chaps and spurs. You know, I really don't need to know what strikes your Toreador fancy, Jazz. I'm I imagining really it right now. Me too. Mm. He, Gross, both of you. Mr. Price, um, again, I'm very hazy on Camarilla structure. I, I'm but a novice student of such things before I struck out on my own. Uh, the Praxis process, um, <clears throat> how does that work? I mean, if someone were to, to challenge him, like how much time is left, like I, I don't understand the process by which Princeton is declared. Mm. I'm afraid I don't either. I'm mm. humble herald, you understand. Mm. I'm sure there are scholars who could 
ends or something. <laughs> Nellie, you've lived in a Camarilla domain. Mm -hmm. Intelligence and politics. Remember that you can make a rouse check to increase an ability temporarily if you want to. Yeah, I'm going to do a rouse check. All right. Think, think, think. It went poorly for me. Yeah, don't think so hard you're angry. Well, crap. <laughs> mm. I didn't warm up my dice. I see. Well, as you are trying to recollect those difficult, chaotic days, the beast stabs at your chest right where that stake was impaling you earlier mm. this evening, and you can feel its teeth gnashing at the edges of the wound, but even though your hunger increases, you can still make the roll. It was a difficult time, and it was a while ago, and it's a little hazy. You said intelligence, I'm sorry. And politics. Thank you, and I boost that by one. Mm -hmm. One more blood. Oh, wait. Yeah. Then, there, we, there we go. There we go. And the hunger dice. Two successes? Two successes. Well, unfortunately, you two are a little hazy on the niceties of declaring praxis. It wasn't really what you were paying attention to at the time. But you're pretty certain that although the prince can, in fact, appoint any court positions he chooses, the kindred he appoints can refuse if they want to. Mm. Now, what happens when a kid refuses such an appointment varies according to the prince that gave the instructions. Specifically, what I'm trying to find out is what goes into someone opposing the someone else trying to become prince instead of the one declaring praxis. That's a fairly easy role. Um, also, intelligence and politics. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I do have some. Sure. Yeah, okay. Both intelligence and politics. <laughs> For you, it's a considerable difficulty because you haven't lived in a Camarilla domain. Two, you're fairly certain that uh, the prince is whoever can hold it, just like a baron is whoever can hold the barony. Declaring praxis is all well and good, but if there is a challenger, one must meet that challenge. New plan, Chaz. Yes, baron. Let's have an election. I'll declare Praxis against Vannevar Thomas. Oh my God. I suppose huh? you're welcome to do so. Yeah, it's gonna work out fine. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Wait. I hate everything. No. Yeah, no, it's gonna be fine. Uh, mm -hmm. And do you really think you can muster more support than Prince Vannevar? Of the kindred in Los Angeles? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, hey, but you know, I'm willing to talk to Vannevar about it. Maybe we can have a conversation. Maybe we can work it out like Vin through. I'll certainly relay this unusual message. I'm not sure how the prince will take such news. We live in unusual times. We certainly do. Yeah. And one thing both the Camarilla and the Anarchs very much have in common is we live by the rule of who can hold what. And unfortunately, I don't think it would do for any of us to just say, please come rule over us. I don't think I could look Baron Abrams in the eye, Nines Rodriguez in the eye, Therese, her sister Jeanette. I don't think I could look any of them in the eye and say, we're just Camarilla subjects now. We just went with it without at least trying to defend our people for a safer, unified Los Angeles. You seem very sure of the ground you stand upon, Baron. Absolutely not, but I would rather be put under it than be a Camarilla lackey. So... Jasper, just so you're aware, you know you can deny the prince's request, right? I, I assumed I could, whether it was in the actual rules or not. I assumed I could say no. What happened to me afterwards is what I'm still thinking about. So legally, I think it's okay now. Oh, good. That's good to know that legally... I can say no. Because that idea of you and the chaps was not a great I will not idea. be wearing chaps. Let's continue this Hey, when I become prince, you're still super going to be sheriff. <laughs> that is going to happen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> great. Well, this is all very entertaining. I'm, I'm sure the prince will get quite a chuckle out when I relay it to him. But I, I suppose my job is done. 
Would you be willing to function as my herald? Would you go back and tell everyone that I've declared practice in Los Angeles, please? Make sure they all know. <laughs> I will return the information to the prince, but in my role as his herald, Baron. But I'm willing to talk to him about it. There's no reason for us to settle this in barbarous ways. Of course, and, and may I say on a personal note, I've never found you anything less than charming. And on a personal note, I love that outfit. That is fantastic. <laughs> that is the, Do flatter me. The vest, oh, that, that is, a, yeah, yeah, Can we not? It's a nice outfit, it is. Like, I, in, is there anything else, Chaz, that you need from us? No. But I realize I've been remiss. I mentioned to the Baron how lovely she looked this evening, but I neglected to tell you, Ellie. But then you always look so lovely. No, 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 no! I'm so sorry, I cannot anymore! You do not get to talk to Nellie! You don't get to talk to her without her permission at all from now on, ever again! Nellie, do I have your permission? To speak to you. He doesn't. You don't have to say yes to that, Nelly. You do not. Do tell your friend. <laughs> yes. You see, everyone's happy. Let us not forget our strategy. Mr. Chauncey approaches behind your left shoulder and leans over to remind you about your next appointment. Ah, yes, of course, Chauncey. Thank you so very much. Chester, prepare the way. Chauncey, make sure they know we're coming. And Nelly, you'll be hearing from me again in the next few nights, hmm? Hmm. Can't wait. Good night, everyone. Uh, please let me know if we have the debates, if there's a runoff, like um, whatever that is. Oh, yes, the election. I'm yeah. Sure. No, I've declared I'm, praxis. Like, I'm happened. sure the prince will be delighted and tickled. I am happens. both delighted and tickled, yes. You so, know, please, yeah. Seeing as you I'm never the sheriff failed. now, I did witness you declaring praxis. <laughs> so if the information doesn't get to Vannevar, with Rest your assured. herald. Rest assured, I will be informing the prince of tonight's activities. Ah, uh, just, ah, uh, it's just, yes, a little bit of blood. <laughs> well, good night, everyone. This has been unexpected and highly entertaining. Good night, Nelly, dear. Oh, uh, Baron, on the way out, I wonder if I might have a private word with you. But of course. You will accompany right me? One moment. Of course. I'll just wait for you by the door. Chauncey, Chester. Until next time, Mr. Price. Chauncey and Chester do as they are told, clearing the way and ensuring that your next appointment is informed that you are en route. And so, Chaz Price leaves. Well, I see that that went very, very, very well. <laughs> Sticking to the plan, I see. A plan, yes. But I mean, you've thrown a curveball. We have hopefully prevented outright war long enough for us to meet, long enough for us to form a strategy, long enough to understand the Camarilla strength and presence in Los Angeles. We've postponed something. Miss Annabelle, may I share some wisdom with you? Please. It is better to keep your mouth shut and be thought of as a fool than to open your mouth and have it proved outright. Stay silent and listen. You have so much to learn, and I would hate for your mouth to cause more trouble than it already has. I'm going to go deal with this. Hey. I trust I can count on your support and your sister's support for my praxis, correct? Of course. We all have to stick together. You can count on my support. My sister, well, you know she's a ride or die anarch, but she's unpredictable. Have her text me, I'd like to, you know, yeah. Annabelle, if you see X, please apologize for me. And if you see Jeanette, run. Always a pleasure, Baron.
That went well. <sighs> it could have gone worse. It could have gone way better. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. I don't give a shit what you say to Chaz. <sighs> Not to Chaz, I mean... To her? Yeah. Yeah, that probably wasn't a good idea. But then who am I to say what's a good idea? Except You're the now sheriff. The sheriff. <laughs> I was say. No, but seriously, though. No, but seriously, this I is really bad. am going to. It was bad, but I am going to punch his stupid, handsome face in one of these days. And Nellie, I don't know what's going on. And you're allowed to have your secrets. But remember, you need to trust us if we're going to trust you. We pulled you out of a hole tonight, and you got angry and yelled at us. He walks in here for five minutes, threatening all of us, threatening everything we are. And you roll over like a purring kitten. It's because he has something over me. He can't have that much over you. I was a different person before I met you, Victor. Yeah, you know what? That's gonna stop meaning anything. Cause you guys saw where I live and you saw what I do. And you're all still wanting to be my friend. So this, what I did was so terrible I can't tell you about it, is starting to Float away. As long as you keep it secret, he's gonna have power over you, Nellie. Okay. You swear you have my back on anything? Always. As the sheriff, absolutely. As the prince of Los Angeles, you have my support. I killed one of our kind. So what? So did I. Yeah, we both. We all have. Well, not her. Not me yet. I took everything of hers. Yeah. Everything. Wait, like you robbed somebody? Like I don't no, know. she didn't. <laughs> her voice is sometimes. I can hear that. Well, how? Annabelle, I did something that Kindred isn't allowed to do in the Camarilla. It's called Diablerie. I took everything from Donna. She, what she did, Diablerie is the process of draining everything from a vampire, feeding on another kindred and sucking everything, including who they are away. And then that spark of who they are lives inside of you forever. If their blood is stronger than yours, it can even overwhelm you. You get their power, but you take everything from them. Who, 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 when? And there always is the chance that they take you over instead. How can you even be sure that your you, and not them. When, when? When I left San Francisco, when I ran from Chaz, she was there. And she tried to blackmail me, so I killed her. I killed her good. Yeah, there are easier ways to kill Yeah, somebody. you didn't just, get, so. I didn't. No, I'm sorry. You remember like uh, whew, like an hour ago when I was like, are there any other catastrophic black secrets that are going to land on all of us that you might want to tell us about? The Camarilla henchman knowing that you have committed the cardinal sin of diablerie is on that list. So I ask you again, I ask you again, is there anything else that Isaac knows or Nines Rodriguez knows or Casper the friendly fucking ghost okay. is going to appear okay. and tell me about Victor. you? Victor. She told us now. That must have been incredibly difficult for her. Oh, I'm I, sorry. Nellie, that's, I mean, you, you won't do it again, right? 
I've never done it since. It's been years. <laughs> and you feel bad about it, right? Of course. What? Her her voice is still. I can hear it sometimes. If, ah, uh, yeah, it's. A, I. Mm. I didn't know what I was doing at the time, and it happened. What clan was she? Because if her clan finds oh, out, that's a different set of problems. God's sake! I have a guess. It's it's Tremere. It's Tremere. That, my friend, is incorrect. Oh, is it? Thank God, because the last thing we need is the Tremere looking. Well, then please enlighten me. Chaz took another. Donna. She was my broodmate, I suppose, if that's what you want to call it. Chaz made her. Before or after you? After. So then, in the interest of not keeping secrets anymore, why is it you know all this magic? Because yes. you've been pretty brazen with it. We all have our positions with Baron Abrams. Yeah, and the position of magician and witch seems to be filled by Eva. So I'm curious. He helped me to acquire these powers so that I can carry out tasks for him in secret. I work as what you call a sort of thespian spy, if you will. You said work. Work is present tense. You didn't say worked. You said work. So are you still doing this stuff for Abrams now? He hasn't given me a mission in a long time. But if asked, I'd be inclined to help him unless you don't want me to. Baron. When you look up, Victor, you see that that supporting eye beam is full of rats. At least a dozen now, not just one. All looking down intently. I don't say anything. If they don't notice me looking, I don't I don't tip it off. One of them raises a little clawed paw. Oh, so again, you and I are going to have to sort through a number of things, both personally and professionally. But at this exact second, we have some bigger fish to fry. Cause Therese is collaborating. Yeah. Duh. Vanivar is going around telling everyone that he's declared Praxis. Some people are going to listen. Some people are going to try and save their own skin and just go with it. I'm dead serious about doing whatever Camarilla show and dance I have to do to prolong this process for us to be able to do something. We've got to get all the barons on what? one page. Do you all actually think about her plan? It's not a horrible plan. Five mm, thousand years of history. At least the last two-ish thousand years have proven pretty conclusively there is apparently no peaceful coexistence yeah. between the Anarchs and the Camarilla as much as I would love it because, again, the FBI is not going to care about what team we're on. They're only going to see us as horrible monsters to be destroyed. But if they don't believe that, if they don't care, if they think they might even believe it but think they're the ones to solve it and we just all have to get in line, no. Nellie, your phone rings. It is Abram's number. Ooh. I put him on speaker. Nellie? Sir? I just got a call from Therese. Are you okay? I'm fine. 
You heard? Praxis. Mm -hmm. Am I on speakerphone? You are. Is this going to be like an insta chirp or something? <laughs> uh, no. I believe I gave you my word that I would stay off streaming until the barons met. Baron and Temple. A man of my word. Mm. So you've all been told. Just so you know, myself and Annabelle are here as well. I. Jasper Sheriff. And I declared praxis against Vannevar Thomas. Uh-huh. Fine. Listen, he's on his way here next. He's informing all the barons tonight. Nines will be last. So, I realize that uh, you don't have a lot of experience with this, Victor, but uh, Praxis has been declared, and whoever holds it keeps it. So, I don't know if you're serious about your stunt, but you'd have to kill him. I trust when it comes to it, I can count on your support, sir. Yeah, we'll talk about that at the Baron meeting in a few nights. Mm. Until then, I recommend you not go around calling yourself a prince, because <laughs> Nines and I certainly wouldn't like that. You so, Nellie, you sure you're okay? I'm fine. All right, I heard otherwise, but... We'll talk later. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Listen, I gotta get ready for my guest and decide whether or not I actually let him leave in one piece. Nines doesn't have to. Yeah, well, I think that Nines will exercise a lot more prudence. We'll here, see, here, though. You're here for diplomacy. By the when way. you live as long as I do, you can mock it. Until then, I'll see you in a couple nights. Never mind. And that is where we leave our tale for now. But I will remind you that secrets have a way of getting out. Hello? Special Agent Demetrios? Yeah, who's this? You'll learn who I am later. Consider me your new handler. <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't have a handler. I'm burnt. I'm out. I haven't heard from the headquarters in like six months. Listen, we had a chance to review some of your reports, Greg. There's some pretty extreme stuff in here. How did you get this number? If you're coming after me, you better arm up. We're not coming for you, Agent Demetrios. We believe you. We know what's in these reports are real. We know that they are real. The blank bodies. We need you back. Uh, well, maybe I don't want to come back. You don't have a choice. Let's get you a secure line. Go to your regular LA drop tomorrow morning and expect contact on your new assignment. Code name: First Light. I. Uh, uh, uh. Glad to have you back, Agent. Daffodil. Oh, shit, that's from her. Thank you for saving me. I appreciate your dedication to our cause. I think it's time you take the next step. You'll know what to do with the enclosed. Do this before sunrise. Drink me. 